Hi guys, welcome to another video. So as you probably have noticed, I'm focusing this channel mostly on anime and stories like that. But I don't want to just do um, anime. So there's a game, you may have heard of it, called Fire Emblem Three Houses. And it is my favorite game of all time. Now I am not as, not as big of a gamer as lots of people on YouTube. So I didn't want to make my channel only about games, but I do love games, but I'm very picky. I love games with a great story and great characters. And that's what keeps me learning the gameplay in a way is to learn more about the characters. Though with this game, the gameplay, I probably would have kept playing. The story really hooked me. I played this game and you like anime and you like good stories and like good characters. Like, oh my gosh, go check it out. It's a great game. Start out with this main character, Byleth. You can, and um, I always played as a girl Byleth because when I was like 10, I always wanted to play as like a girl character. Like I remember playing, what was that game called? Harvest Moon. And you could only play as a boy. And I was like, I didn't mind really that much, but I was always like, man, I really want to play as a girl. So any, anyways, I don't really care, but anytime I get to play as a girl, I get kind of excited. It's like child me. Um, back to what I was talking about. So anyways, you start as Byleth. Uh, Byleth is a mercenary. I'll stick with she because that's how I played, but, um, dad, his name is Gerald. And, uh, she, her and Gerald are just, you know, out there being mercenaries, living their lives. When all of a sudden, you know, there are three students who are in trouble being chased by some thieves. And you're like, what is going on? Oh, and you get in the beginning of of this video game um but i promise it makes sense pretty early on so you you get to meet these three students you help them out this is all in the, like the prologue so don't worry i'm not spoiling like more than the prologue and you know you they take you up to this school it's run by a bi very powerful bishop named Rhea, who basically is ruling three different kingdoms which is pretty impressive so so imagine like the Vatican in its heyday, or like, oh, there you go, that's Rhea. Uh, lots of military power and uh, political power. I'm asking you to be a professor with her political power at, at this school, and you're like the same age as a student, so you're like, um, okay, I guess. Um, and you could choose between three different houses. And uh, they all have different vibes, and what's cool about this game too is it talks a lot about class too. So, um, and students are treated differently based on the class that they come from, especially from certain um, countries. So you can choose like the Black Eagles, which they're all from the Empire, and uh, a lot of nobles in, in that one. You can choose the um, Blue Lions, who are more of a traditional sort of house, or if you will, um, they come from the kingdom of Fargus, so there's like, there's a king. They all sort of have like a knightly vibe about them. A uh, good mix of like commoners and nobles. And then you have the, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking. Golden Deer, the Golden Deer. Um, from the con they're from that country, and it's kind of a republic, so all the students are kind of commoners in a way. Um, some of them are nobles, but it's a, through a more sort of like, democratic process than the other houses. The houses have really interesting characters and no wrong picking any house in my opinion. If you would like to know what, like, okay, so the way I did it is I did the Black Eagles first and um, skip this part if you want no spoilers about any routes whatsoever. So skip the next like 10 seconds. I accidentally did the secret route in the Black Eagles on my first go through without knowing about the routes because I just like kept talking to Edelgard because I wanted to know all the characters really well. And so I accidentally did it and I was like, wow, that was really cool. I find out it's the shortest route um, out of all of them and I was like, wow. So anyways, the way that the perspectives go with that one, I would recommend um, choosing a different route first. I, it, I think it was still a really cool experience, but I think it would have been really interesting to do that one towards the end. So I would recommend doing like probably 
the blue lions, then the golden deer, then the black eagles. And the silver snow route, um, I think you can skip. But, like, when I, honestly, like, I had done the other three routes first. And once I did silver snow, I was kind of like, eh. So, that's my non-spoilery opinions. Um, so, now I'll get into some spoilery stuff. So, here's your spoil spoiler warning. <laughs> For me, I think my favorite route is the Blue Lions. The reason the Blue Lions were my favorite is I think Dimitri's story just gets to you the most. And the way that part one is written goes very well. Like, you can tell it was really written for the Blue Lions. Like, um... Yeah, we're in spoiler territory, okay. So like Ash, right? Like his um, adoptive father dies in the beginning and then you have Sylvain and his um, brother in that issue, all in part one, Annette's, Annette's father show up. So a lot happens in part one that doesn't really matter that much in the other stories. I guess a critique I would have of the game is I wish they would have added more different part ones for each house or at least did different maps or something different where we didn't have like Gilbert showing up in the Black Eagles or the Golden Deer because it didn't I mean it made sense to points like because you know you get to know these characters on the routes and you're like oh man I have to fight them or whatever but you know what I'm saying like I, I wish they would have added a little more at the same time this game is insane and the reason it's my favorite is I've always been fascinated by the idea of like the butterfly effect so like if one thing happens and it changes how does it change everything else and this game is kind of the definition of that you know like if you choose a different house it affects the entire game so you know looking at it from like a real life perspective one simple decision like oh i'm going to be the professor of this house or that house that you wouldn't think would be that big of a deal changes like the politics and um the literal ending and and people's lives in the game and i just think that's so cool um, it gives me high hopes for the game coming out, Project Triangle Strategy, but I just don't know. I, I, I'm very excited for that game, but I'm trying to give it its own sort of expectations because, like, Fire Emblem Three Houses really blew me away in that regard. Like, was it perfect? No, but I hadn't really played a game where there were that many differences um, in maps and in story and in character, especially when you when you play it. Um, and yeah, like I was saying, the reason the Blue Lions, I think, is my favorite is Dimitri's story is just such a great, um, like, redemption arc. And I, I just feel like you can't help but feel something playing, playing his arc. And, and it's rough, you know, you see him, you, he literally disappears for, like, part of your route. And then when you do see him, he, like, isn't talking and, you know, he went through, like, I think I always just, if you can't tell, I gravitate towards stories about PTSD. So I think the trauma he went through with his family and blaming himself for what happened really resonated with me. And so I always really, uh, his route and uh, found it fascinating how, you know, he sort of had this persona of being uh, probably how he was before the, the trauma where he was very, you know, I don't want to use the word professional, kingly, I guess, a knightly. And then bad things would happen. He would like, you know, literally change his entire personality. But really it was just, he was so, had so much suppressed anger and rage that he was like going crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> he definitely, I would love to do like a deeper analysis, but I'm trying to keep it short on, on this one. Um, I found his route the most rewarding because you're really like, helping Dimitri's character out a lot and it, I don't know all the characters were just so well done really in every route which is why it's my favorite game of all time every character like you want to know more about they all have great backstories they all are connected and um you know even like the the DLC the characters were done pretty well like and, and it's so cool you could play part two and you could have them like end up with different people and you learn how they're connected to other people and it's just kind of insane the amount of content that, that went into these games for the characters. The Golden Deer route I really enjoyed for getting like the lore 
and Claude's character is pretty funny, but I don't know. I I did f I think for Claude's route and the Golden Deer, the most fascinating thing to me was seeing Claude navigate sort of like having two different identities. So he had the identity of like Fodlin, and then he had the identity of um, the other country and like his father and being from there. And and I thought that was really fascinating seeing him sort of like try to deal with the politics of all of it. Edelgar's where it was interesting because like I said earlier, I did that one first. So I was like fairly sold on her side because I was like, okay, like, you know, it, it's interesting how it shows you how when you don't have all the information, it can skew things, you know, in real life too. And, you know, I was like, you know, that's reasonable. Like, you know, the church is uh, manipulating people and using its power for, for evil and a meritocracy and a democracy sounds great. Obviously, I value those things. Um, so I was like, cool. Um, then I played the other routes and I realized, okay, maybe Edelgard's motivations weren't so um, pure shield on. And I realized like how much she left your character, Byleth, out of the conversation. And and this could just be obviously because the developers didn't have time, but there's just a lot that like, isn't said with the, those who sl slither in the dark and you know after seeing Edelgard and Dimitri's route and like how far she's willing to go it definitely changed my perception of her a lot so I was kind of like oh team Edelgard whatever but as much as I sympathize for her for being literally experimented on and everything she went through and I love how strong of a character she is I can't get behind some of her actions, especially I didn't really realize the first time playing the game that she was the one turning students into these like or she was approving it, I guess. Like I know I don't think it was her idea to use the crest stones to turn students into the m monsters, but she kind of like still allowed it to happen and um I just think there must have been a better way, you know? So I don't don't really approve of that. So I'd have to say, I have to say it's a great route. I really enjoyed playing Edelgard's route. It makes you think about a lot of philosophical questions, but her character, I did not sympathize with as much as other characters. Yeah, I'd say my, I love all three routes. Like, I don't think I could even pick like, oh, I would only play this route. I would genuinely play all three because of, I just love how all three really do tell you a different, side of the story and I just think it's so much more realistic to real life to have instead of it being like oh this is the good guy and this is the bad guy 100% have these characters who all have different motivations and reasons for doing what they're doing and in their mind like they're the hero and I think that makes sense from a psychological perspective you know you always hear about how everyone thinks they're the protagonist of their own story and I think Fire Emblem Three Houses um, embodies that really really well so I love that about it. And to me, the gameplay is just a bonus. I mean, I loved the grid system. I loved upgrading my weapons. I loved the side quests, like going in. Because you would learn more about sort of the lore of the world along with getting a really cool weapon. I, I just thought everything was really fascinating. And I, I liked sort of the perspective of time period and just, it's just such a political game. To me and I also really love that so anyways I'm rambling now I'll probably do another video about Fire Emblem Three Houses at some point I'm hoping they announce a new game soon this is the only Fire Emblem game I've played but like I said literally my favorite game of all time um, by far I if you saw my review on Trails of Cold Steel I would say my three favorite series even if I haven't played all the games in some of them is um, Trails of Cold Steel the Xenoblade Chronicles series and the fi like Fire Emblem Three Houses, which I'm assuming I'll love the series as well. It's my favorite game of all time. I'm putting it in favorite series of all time. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's a little bit more about some gaming stuff. Um, please feel free to you know leave any requests of what you guys want to hear about when it comes to games. I could talk about my favorite JRPGs or stories or characters, but. But yeah, I do plan to talk about games on this channel some, but just more in relation to the story because that's what really drives me to play a game. The gameplay still has to be interesting. Like, I don't want to just read like a visual, 
Not that there's anything wrong with this. I just, I don't, I don't really like play games that are visual novels. Not that I wouldn't. I, I might if there's a good one. Um, if you guys have reps, let me know. But, but yeah, I just, I love a game with a great world and, and a great story. Um, oh, and if you have any recommendations for games on Switch that are like those games I mentioned, um, and I haven't played it, please let me know because, um, definitely looking for more games. I've been watching more anime more than playing games recently or manga just because, um, or I've been reading manga as well, just because I haven't seen anything that looks super great. One game I do want to play soon is, um, Shin Megami Tensei 5, which haven't played the other ones. If you haven't noticed, that doesn't stop me from playing games. So, um, I will, uh, definitely be checking out Shin Megami Tensei 5 and, um, yeah, let me know. Thanks again for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.